Friday night, I, I get confused sometimes. Uh, let, let's get right down to okay. it. Now, you talk about the origin of things. Where did the brassiere come from? Uh, that's something I try to dispel, a myth. If you look in your fashion books, you'll find that it was invented by a guy by the name of Otto Titzling. Uh, that's not true. That's... I tracked that down. You wouldn't I... chance to live in a building with Howard Stern, would you? No. Also, I try to dispel the myth that the flush toilet was invented by, who have you always heard? Thomas uh, Crapper. Thomas Crapper. Thomas Crapper. That's not true. He, there was a Briton by the name of Thomas Crapper. He was a plumber, so he probably worked on toilets. Uh -huh. But he had nothing to do with inventing them. I go into the origins of hairstyles. Uh, let's go back to the Assyrians, who wore some, I mean, really weird hairstyles, hair coloring. Yeah. Uh, now, do, but do we uh, know where this came from, though? Actually, yes. The, it goes back to Egyptian times, when the bra did not cover the breast, it lifted them out of the dress, uh -huh. where they were fully exposed. And then in the next era, they were bound down during the Christian period. I mean, women were not supposed to even show breasts. The modern ones is 1913. Yeah. My favorite in the book is this little thing, the can uh -huh. opener. The can originated in... 1810, but there were no there were no can openers for the next 60 years. Right, uh, cans just came with labels saying use hammer and chisel. I mean, you got in there any way you wanted, and, and they were big. Yeah. I mean, lead cans. You'd be hungry. Right, I mean, to want to eat. Very thirsty. We got, uh, now they, they took this out of my dressing room. I don't know why, but apparently there's a. Where do condoms come from? It's empty. It, yeah. It's empty. Yeah. Well, I, since I got <laughs> the show, right. I've been very active. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> They actually go back to uh, 1500s of Dr. Fallopius, the discoverer of the fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. And back in those times, there was a Dr. Condom. He came 100 years later, and uh, he was the royal physician to Charles II. But condoms then were uh, linen sheaths dipped in sort of wax or heavy oil, so they were un impermeable, but they had a little pink ribbon around the base that tied them on. <laughs> And this is to make, honestly, to make it less intimidating oh, to the female. Oh, that keeps excitement in the sexual well, Excuse me, Reverend, let me tie it on. I'll be right with you. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, it's like, I'm tying it on. I'm tying it on. Help me tie it. Let's, let's look at, uh, oh, okay, your toothbrush? Okay. Toothbrush? Uh, toothbrush goes back to Egyptian times. They had really, sophisticated, every bit as sophisticated as ours. Mm -hmm. They took little twigs off a tree, they frayed the end, and then they would rub it against the teeth. But they had one very bizarre practice. Mm -hmm. For toothpaste, <laughs> this is true, I'm not making this up. For toothpaste, they used human urine. And for, for centuries, no, it's true. For centuries, scientists just thought that this was a bizarre, sort of kinky practice. But today, chemists tell us it's the ammonia in urine that whitens your teeth. And when you go to a dentist, he uses products that have ammonia or uric okay, acid Okay, this it. is the book. Charles has to go now. Uh, here's the book, though. Uh, this, this, can I keep this book? Because I bet this is great. Yeah, sure. You don't brush your teeth with 